A certain handle on Twitter, Lagospedia, demanded for the forceful relocation of Igbos from Lagos and other southwest states within one month. The hashtag Igbo must go also called on all Yorubas living in the southeast to return to southwest. Lagosians and every southwest stakeholder should prepare for the massive protest of as Igbo must go on the 20th to 30th of August 2024. He says that they have one month from now to leave and relocate their businesses from all southwest states. We urge all Yorubas living in the southeast to return home. The handle had tweeted. Now, Obasanjo has come out to say that anybody saying Igbo must go in Lagos will be the ones that will leave. Yoruba leaders, well-meaning Yoruba leaders are now speaking to that fact that Nigeria was built with collective efforts. When you look at what is happening in some parts of Nigeria, it is the commonwealth of the country that is being used to finance other states. Lagos being a viable state is as a result of the instrumentality of resources from other states, especially in the south-south and the southeast. And telling somebody to leave a certain place because you feel that that place is viable and is developing, you want to now take advantage of what has been collectively built over the years to tell a particular people to go because you think that they are provoking you or you think that they are disrespecting you as host, Obasanjo says that Igbos cannot leave Lagos, that it is those that are asking Igbos to leave Lagos, they are the ones that will leave. Now, the Lagos PDR guy is nowhere to be found, and my suspicion is that why is it that it is difficult to find this Lagos PDR guy and make him understand that if you are going to ask a people to leave, there is a constitutional provision for that. You need to go through the way of the constitution. Change the constitution whereby you can say regionalism, then you can pro promulgate or propagate any law, decree any law, and you ask them to leave. But one thing you need to understand is that, I repeat it in my former broadcast, that no one tribe can develop a place. No one tribe. It has never happened in the history of the world. Even Venice, we had people from all around uh, the, the earth, the world, coming to Venice to trade and cause development. The Jews were in Venice. No, Anywhere in Europe that you don't see a Jew, you find it difficult to see development in that place. The Jews, as represented in this, our environment, there is the Igbos. I'm not talking about little, little provocations by some number of persons. You can see we have in every, every tribe, they are a kind of people that you meet that would just not represent the tribe as expected. Yes, there are people like that. As we speak, the ingenuity of Igbos is being represented and respected all over the world. I'm not saying that because I'm an Igbo person. I have studied the life, the lifestyle of the Igbo man and every other tribe. I've seen that the Igbo man needs to be in a place where there is development or the Igbo man needs to be instrumental to any development in any place in the world. Somebody says if you go to any country in the world and you don't find an Igbo man, uh, just run away from, from that country. If you go to any place in the world and you don't find an Igbo man, run away from that country. I just believe that some of these lots are... Uh, are being ignorant about the fact that even though there's going to be a division of Nigeria or there's going to be regionalism, does not necessarily mean Igbo will just have to leave Lagos. Their properties and their investments will be protected as per. Now, that now brings uh, us to the fact that maybe one of the reasons why these guys are saying it is because they intend to take over properties belonging to Igbos because of jealousy. Because why would somebody just wake up one morning and say, Igbo must go, and that person went to school, you did government in school, you did politics in school, and you know that you don't just say Igbo must go like that without amending the constitution. You don't just say Igbo must go like that without doing necessary things. It's just like you are committing 
if you want to take other action, you're starting a tribal war. If you are being caught and the law will take its place, it's told on you, you are committing treason. But still, I continue to see handles on social media that are calling for this Igbo Moscow. I, I want to advise again, if you are going to call on Igbo Moscow, there are ways to do it. Pressure your house, your lawmakers, whether in the southwest, pressure them that they should push for a change in the constitutions because Igbos really want to go. I'm telling you, Igbo being part of Nigeria is just limiting their destiny. Igbos being part of Nigeria is just suppressing, sup is suppressing what God has designed them to do. Because in every sector you see the oppression on Igbo. In every sector, politically, economically, re religious-wise, you can see everybody is trying to form a cabal to make sure that they limit the progress of Igbos in every sector of the economy. And you know that Nigeria is a lying country, a country that gaslights, a country that denies everything. They even deny the truth. They deny the obvious. Look at the governor of Ogun State, Amosu. He said that he mistakenly signed a contract worth billions of naira. A governor, a sitting governor, said he mistakenly signed a contract worth billions of naira, $75 million. A sitting governor with advisors, with commissioners, with people working in the office and aides. He mistakenly signed. It was after how many years that he left power that he now realized that he mistakenly signed a contract worth millions of dollars, if not, let's say, billions of naira. These are the kind of people we have in the place of power. So when I say Igbos have been suppressed in every sector, when you look at the financial sector, the politics that has been played everywhere is just to limit the Igbo man from having access to governance, to the seat of power. If you're an Igbo man, you only get to a certain place most of the time by connection. For instance, in the House of Assembly, every senator has a slot. That is where an Igbo man comes in. But every other, you go by yourself and you get employed, you get connected, it is less likely. When you go to the civil service, federal civil service, you see them there. When you go to other parastatals, I hear they are in, uh, the Igbos are much in NAVDAC. Go to other parastatals of government, go to establishment agencies of government, you can see how Igbos are being limited. And there's a deliberate thing for that. Everybody is screaming Igbo must go in their attitude, in their character, in their disposition. And the Igbo wants to go. So if this Lagos PGA guy wants this to be, yes, a reality, if that is his own dream, he should approach the lawmakers and their clique of people. We understand how these people play their games. They know what they are doing. They are calculative in what they are doing. The guy might be a fool, might be a scapegoat, but the main people that really want this to happen, they are at the background watching the trend of things. And little by little, they will be implementing what they have planned. Kemi Adeoshu, former finance minister, said he is happy that Igbos are no more relevant in the financial sector. Is it the sacked or the resigned Kemi Adeoshu under Buhari's regime, minister of finance, said in a tweet of that level, of that caliber, a minister saying that she, she is happy that the egos are being, are not relevant, uh, like slowly becoming irrelevant in the financial sector. If you have worked in an office and you, you see the, 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 the politics that has been played by some of our southern brothers, you understand where we are coming from at this moment. If a buyer or Nanuga can spew heat, even as an official of the government. This is to tell you what they, what they, what they discuss 
in their offices, in their parties, or wherever they find themselves, in their gatherings, in their Igbo gatherings. This sudden hate for the Igbo race is just so alarming. Shore said that, that hatred for Igbo is in the blood of an average Nigerian. So Obasanjo has come out to say that nobody is going in Lagos. Those saying Igbo must go. I said I should come and tell you. Those saying Igbo must go are the ones that will go. Now the Lagos PDA guy is nowhere to be found. He has stopped tweeting. He's afraid for his life. He ran away. He is afraid. Calling that such a threat, it is unwise. You people need to understand that. You need to be smart and intelligent enough to call for. Imagine you come in a Nigeria protected by the constitution where you have the army, navy to protect the sovereignty of the constitution. The constitution acknowledges every Nigerian as a bona fide citizen, whether you're Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba, or Fulani. Then you come and said a certain people must go and you are putting a date, you want to take an action, you want to start attacking people, putting that out. What does that mean? It means you're not, you know, you're not wise enough to know what you have to do. I know many people will start coming out, start attacking President, former President Oshogo Basanjo. They will start attacking him. Already, some people said that his father is from Anambra, his father is an Igbo man. He also reacted to that, and he laughed at that propaganda that uh, that uh, that that is being said about him. He laughed, and he gave them the answer. I will not give you the answer here, because when I go to newspaper stands and I start, we, we have an argument on whether Obasanjo's father's father is Yoruba or Igbo. The, the, most of these guys, most of these guys come out and say, yeah, Obasanjo is an Igbo man. Okay, an Igbo man in the form of a Yoruba man, that is Obasanjo, has come out to say that you, that you are saying Igbo was going in Lagos, will be the one that will leave. Yes. Will be the one that will leave. Then there's a video that is trending of a man, I believe he says an Igbo man, whether he's an Igbo or what, from South Africa, asking Igbos to attack the above Lagos and throw him into the lagoon. That is not representative of, he does not represent the Igbo people. He's speaking for himself. The Igbos are focused on how to exit Nigeria and have their own country that will benefit them. We're not focused on such lame actions. Some people will just sit down behind the camera and start skipping rubbish. Like I said, I don't, I'm not interested in, sen in sentiment or pacifying every, anybody. I'm looking at it and I'll tell you how it is. How it is. It is not representative of the Igbo people to carry out violence on their host. Because even after you get Biafra, you need the relation. You need to relate with your sister states. So we don't need to be enemies. Just that there's a different government that is now piloting the affairs of our lives now. Don't just come out. Don't become like this guys that are calling for Ibu must go. You need to, you're a respected person. You're a divine person. You are a unique person. As an Igbo man, you are unique in everything you do. You become the light, the source in every area you find yourself. You don't come out and you talk anyhow. You need to understand with all your intelligence. I'm speaking to that video. We me, I condemn it. I don't know if the Ohanese or Igbo leaders have condemned that video. I condemn it. We, when we look at substance, I've said it, that the person saying Igbo must go... The threat is unrealistic because this is not 1967. It is a different ball game, and Nigeria, as we speak, is divided. Then Nigeria would be united. The unity is much more between the north and the southwest is much more better than now. If you want to call for division of Nigeria now and there is unrest some people will start dividing themselves from the north any mention of division of Nigeria or there's an attack on a particular people and there's bloodshed on the streets that is when you find out that 
Nigeria has been divided a long time ago. People will start demarcating Nigeria for themselves. But the people that are holding Nigeria down would not want Nigeria to divide because if Nigeria divides, they become irrelevant. Their investment becomes irrelevant. Whatever they have used Nigeria to borrow becomes irrelevant. They are in trouble. They will now go bankrupt. The people holding Nigeria are now speaking. Babangida spoke. Um, Obasanjo is speaking now. Atiku spoke against so-called Igbo must go. Peter B usually has spoken against the Igbo must go. So bury that hashtag. Bury it already. It is not going to happen except we all come together. The Igbos have already decided they are going. So don't just be so naive and start pushing an hashtag. An hashtag. The people that own Nigeria, I repeat, will come after you. Start pushing that hashtag, Igbo must go. Because when you say Igbo must go and there's a unanimous decision by everybody and it becomes violent, it is eventually going to help the Igbo nation to go. You understand? So understand that these people cannot pull this off at this point in time. They are afraid. They are afraid to pull it off. If they have the guts to pull it off, they have done it a long time ago. They are afraid. The Lagos State Governor, Deputy Governor, some leaders, political leaders of the state that has been um, there's a product of the 1999 constitution that is, is being protected by the constitution have come out to debunk and disassociate themselves from that handle and that person that is saying Igbo must go. So it is irrelevant for you to start reacting that way. It is not how an Igbo leader needs to react to the situation. You don't react anyhow. Like I said, there's always some people that will always give a tribe bad name. There are people giving the Southwest, the Southeast, the North bad names. So that is a normal thing. But at this point in time, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, while meeting some leaders, Igbo leaders, who went to meet him, said that nothing like that for now. There's nothing like that. Um, but what I want is that I want something that will happen in Nigeria that everybody will have to answer his or father's name through a special assistant on media. Ken the Akiemi said that, um, the former president does not believe. Anybody in Nigeria should be driven away from any part of the country, asserting that we own this country together. That is from the other statement. Those people that are benefiting from Nigeria, that's usually their statement. We own this country together. So just understand that statement alone would defeat. I'm talking to these guys that are pushing for that narrative. When you want to push a narrative, Understand the handwriting on the wall. Understand. But Igbos are not afraid of anybody. You're not afraid. You know it. I know it. You're not afraid. We are not saying that because we are afraid of what you're saying. You know that Igbos want to go, want to leave the country, and the country does not really want to leave the Igbo. I said at the beginning that the Igbos are like the Jews in Africa. Wherever you go in Africa that you don't find an Igbo man, leave that place immediately. I'm not saying it because I'm an Igbo or whatever. Because some people will take this as offensive. Other tribes have their unique peculiarities. Every other tribe have their, what is their saleable point. But I'm talking about the Igbo nation the Igbo race. If you don't have Igbo in Nigeria, you're losing. You're losing. If Igbo should leave a place, if there's no presence of Igbos in any place, you are the ones that are losing. It is not the Igbo man. So, you, we, we understand that there's some people that provoke. But we also understand that the Oba of Lagos started all this because of elections. The APC gang, Ronu gang, APC political gang in Lagos 
and the MC Olomo of this world, they all started all this because of elections. Igbos were, were in peace with their Yoruba neighbors, neighbors. There's no time in Lagos that you hear, you hear that Igbos and Yoruba fight. It's only Hausas and Yoruba that fight. You will not hear that. You will not hear that. But because of politics, some people came in and started doing all sort of things, started pushing all sort of narratives so that they can install themselves in power, planting that heat amongst the indigenous people in Lagos State, amongst Lagos residents and indigents. So the Oba of Lagos started it by saying we want to throw people into Lagoon. From there, Omoibo, leave Lagos, this, that. You want to take over our political power. You want to take over this. You want to dominate us. You have a plan. You are afraid of every step that the woman makes. Lagos belong to Yorubas. We forever. Or maybe in the future. But for now, Lagos belong to Yorubas. Nobody's going to take any land from anybody. Yorubas control Lagos. So why the force? Why, why are you fidgety? What's the essence of you just running helter skelter? You understand? Igbo man living in Nigeria is a must. One day, but let's do it the right way.